Welcome back everybody to another episode of Project Ozone 3 Kappa Mode. So last episode, we were messing with Astral Sorcery. We progressed pretty far. We got ourselves the top end iridescent altar. Yeah, and then we started growing some crystals and it looks like we got another one that is ready to be harvested. I've uh, been harvesting them all as they become ready. This one is garbage tier, purity 55, not very good. We are currently growing purity level 100 crystals in here. And well, I want to grab one of these when it's at size 900. Well, actually, I guess we don't have to technically get to size 900 just yet. Let's go ahead and grab this one. This one was the one that just blinked there. So this is size 831. It has a purity of 100%, so we are good on the purity. Cutting needs to be improved a little bit. So the way you improve cutting is by right-clicking that onto a grindstone. I'm actually going to move our grindstone here. Do I have an axe or something? Does that work? Uh, oh, no, you have to use a pickaxe on it. Okay. It looked like it's made out of wood, so I felt like I should have to use an axe, but I guess not. All right, we'll just place it here. So anyway, you uh, take your celestial crystal or your regular crystal, you right click it on there and then you right click it. And every time you right click it, it takes some of the size away and it increases the cutting. So the size is 813. We do that. We look at it where it's size 804, cutting at 80. So if I, if we're at 80, probably about like seven right clicks. Should get us to a size or cutting 100. We're at size 741. So you can see those yellow, the numbers are orange, right? That means that they are as good as they're gonna get. So the next thing we wanna do is pop it right back into that liquid here and let it get up to size 900. And when it's at size 900 with both the purity and the cutting at 100, it's the best that crystal will ever be. So that means like if you set up a collector crystal, it will gather starlight that much better than one that is not at the 100% and 900 size. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to get this crystal to uh, the maximum that we can be. And then I want to set up some kind of a filter, something that can register NBT data, right? And then when another crystal reaches 900, 100%, 100%, it will grab that crystal and put it into a chest because those crystals are ever only going to be cutting 100 when we're trying to get them all the way to the 900 size. So anyway, if we're trying to grow a whole bunch of crystals, we're going to try and make them perfect and we just kind of have to AFK letting them grow in size. So if we have the NBT data known when the crystal reaches that maximum size, instead of splitting, it will get collected. That's the idea. Well, anyway, uh, I need to wait for this crystal here that we just made almost perfect to get to the perfect size. And then we can look at setting up a collection for it. Well, this seems pretty simple to do. Uh, as far as collecting an item, right? So you have an advanced item collector and you can put a filter in here. So we have an item filter and this item filter I have set to ignore metadata. We don't care about that. That's the number where it says like number 11916. It's the slash zero. That's the metadata. It, we don't care about that. It doesn't matter. Uh, the or dictionary doesn't matter because they're all going to be the same type of items that we're looking for. And we're only concerned about NBT data. So the only thing we want to look at is the size 900, purity 100%, and cutting 100%. These are the only particular crystals that we want. So with that all said, if we place this item filter into here and we drop items on the ground, it should pick up the one that we're looking for. Okay, so pick that up and this one now stays. Well, actually, this is kind of interesting because I tried doing this a minute ago and this was not working at all. This filter <laughs> it was not picking up any of these crystals. So something is changing here and I'm not exactly sure what it is that's causing a problem. Uh, yeah, for a little while there, I wasn't picking up any of these items. Yeah, okay, so now I put it in there and it's not picking it up and that is the one that's the, the best one. So somehow things change and I'm not sure what causes it. Yeah, now it won't pick that one up, but it did pick it up a minute ago, you guys saw it. It seems like this should be a pretty easy thing for this to do, but for some reason this advanced item collector doesn't want anything to do with it, and I don't know why. So I was looking at a different method. This is from the same mod, this is random things, and if we put the same item filter into here, we can set this to custom, and we can also set this to a bunch of different things, which is kind of cool, so we can detect if 
any entity is like on top, including me. Uh, living entity, so that's a player or an animal or whatever. It'll only detect animals, monsters, or players, and you see the redstone's on now. Or we can set it to items. So this is not filtered. Like even if we put an item filter in here, this is not filtered. Um, any item will activate the redstone like this spectral relay. Uh, if we set it to custom, however, you can see this gets highlighted here. And then now it takes effect for the item filter. So if I put a spectral relay down, that doesn't emit a redstone. If I do this celestial crystal, it doesn't emit a redstone. If I do this one, which we have an MBT filter, you can see the redstone does turn on. Uh-huh. Well, anyway, the filter works <laughs> and random things can detect it, but for some reason, there's some interaction between the item collector, the crystals being in the liquid starlight, and that item filter, which kind of breaks this. And I'm pretty sure I had this set up in a different playthrough before, something very similar, and it worked just fine. So I'm not sure why this is breaking now. Well, anyway, uh, I'm sure I could probably come up with some kind of workaround method to make this work 100% of the time, all the time, but I don't think it's really worth it. Uh, for right now, we do have one crystal that's perfect, and this is kind of what we're looking for. So I think we can go ahead and move on and when I grow crystals and try and make them perfect, I will just go ahead and do it manually, I guess. Just keep my eye on it. All right, guys. So I have been watching these crystals very diligently and gotten multiple up to where we want. And I have a few more over here still growing and trying to be split. Looks like both of these are split, actually. Yeah, so as we pick these guys up after they have split... This one is a very low size purity 100 and this one is very low size and cutting and stuff. So we need to throw those into here to continue to let them grow and split so we have more purity 100 crystals. All right, so this one and then the other last one is this one right here. Cool. Yeah, so we have four of these that are perfect now, which is great. But what I want to work on at the moment is in order to progress even further into astral sorcery we do need to attune ourselves uh so i was looking at our attunement altar a little bit ago i tried uh i tried attuning myself just a little bit ago and i noticed that there was no particles flashing around this thing so apparently the entire multi-block structure of this attunement altar needs direct sky access now the reason why this wasn't working previously is we set up these guys these spectral relays to boost our alter and the one that was on this side over here was covering up part of the multi-block structure and it took me a little bit of time I was like why is this not working and i was making sure i built this whole thing right and all of this but no no turns out yeah we had to remove one of those spectral relay multi-blocks so now we only have three but anyway in order to get this thing going to infuse ourselves or attune ourselves we need our astral tome once again and we need to pull out one of these constellation papers that we want to attune ourselves with. I do believe I want to attune myself with a Vetus. So we're going to grab this one and put it in our offhand. And then we're also going to need these spectral relays. And we need to place the spectral relays everywhere we see these blue particles. So I can right click here and right here. And yeah, we have to place down. I think there's nine of them for a Vetus. So we should have one remaining by the time we get all of the ones that we need for this. And then when they're all done, you'll have a visual confirmation, like so, that you have done it correctly. Cool. So we have... Oh, no, we had two remaining. Okay. Oh, we had one before, but yeah, I had to take that one down, so we got an extra one. That's what it was. Anyway, so back to the book. I will put the constellation paper back in here. So now we just walk on the platform, and that should attune ourselves. Aha. Uh -huh. So now we get to see a... Kind of a cool third person rotational effect. Uh, this is, I'm recording this on Christmas Eve actually. So you can see that there are some effects going on here. We have some weird wings going on, a little Christmas Santa hat kind of a thing. Yeah. Obviously we've seen the astral sorcery decorations around as well, but <laughs> yeah, just today it seemed like that it updated my player character model to have these extra things on there. But anyway, uh, after a short amount of time, spinning the camera around two or three times, it should finish up, and our vision should expand again, I believe. 
Well, we get the advancement anyway. I can see the light. So what that should allow us to do, oh my goodness, so many flares. What that should allow us to do now is to find more constellations, I believe, in the sky. So we come over here. Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can see more constellations now that we weren't able to see before. But one of the benefits of Avidas that we just attuned ourselves with, if we go to the, the book here and we go to constellations and click on here, we go to the next page, the ritual effect. Um, actually, no mantle. Yeah, I think it is ritual effect. The ritual suffuses the area with invigorating life force. All nearby living entities experience regeneration while nearby crops flourish and grow an accelerated rate. So basically, if I'm standing nearby stuff, things should act like they're getting bone meal, plants will grow randomly and things like that. I'm not sure if there's anything here that will experience that, but I've seen it before, like when you plant the botania petals, for instance, in the ground, normally you bone meal those and the Avidas ritual will just automatically bone meal them for you randomly. So that's kind of cool. It makes, uh, I think this is the one that makes baby animals grow a little bit faster. I don't know, whatever. Maybe you didn't see that in there. But either way, now that we have this done, uh, we need to grab some more of these constellation papers. So let's just cue, whoop, I was gonna cue those on the ground, but I guess I can't do that. There we go. Something like that. If I pick these up, there it is. So now we have learned a whole bunch of different, uh, yeah, different, constellations i don't know if that's all the ones that we can learn or not let's just throw all these in here lucerna uh the one that's really important to us though is horologium and this one only appears i believe every 28 minecraft days or something that's one that we're definitely gonna want let's throw down some more of these okay so we got one more learned here nothing nothing okay so this is the one that we want cool so that should be all of the constellations, aside from like the dim ones, which we can get into a little bit later, but these are all the ones that are important right now. Okay, so now that we have a bunch of these learned, we have to go through our telescope thing every night and try and connect the dots once again. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that with the, was it just two of them? Yeah, I'll go ahead and do that with the two that we can see right now. You know, I was just kind of thinking maybe we could use this entity, entity detector to do like an automated thing. We put like a hopper below a trap door and this thing would emit a redstone signal when it detects the entity that we have specified with this item filter. And that seemed like it'd be a good idea, right? So we take this guy's a 900, 100, 100, we cue it there. And like if it lands on that trap door, the entity detector emits that redstone, closes the trap door, or I guess opens it technically, and then the item falls through, right? So it does that with that one, does it with this one, and that one. It doesn't do it with the shifting star, right? Because that's not the item that we're looking for. Like all of these, all of these appear to work, except for this one, which is 900, 100, 100. And that one doesn't work. I have no idea why. So while I could come up with some pretty cool ideas for this. There's something else going on here that just doesn't really want it to work correctly. But anyway, uh, as you can see, we have quite a few of these celestial crystals now that are all like max level ready to go. And I am still duplicating more so we can have purity 100 should we need them in the future. But I think this is all of the ones that we're gonna need and probably a little bit extra that we're gonna need uh, for attuning crystals. But we really don't want to attune them to Avidas. We want to attune them to that other ritual I was talking about, Horologium. And as I also mentioned, that one only appears like every 28 Minecraft days. This is the one that we really want to discover and this is the one we want to attune our stuff to. That way we can use it for uh, tick accelerating machines and things along those lines. So really it's kind of a waiting game. We need to check the sky pretty much every single night to see if the constellation that we want appears. Uh, I'm not sure if in the this dimension here, the Garden of Glass, the moon is different and the sun is different. I'm not sure if like the sun will actually do the, um, what do you call it, the solar eclipse in this dimension. I think that is a different sun. Maybe if we're in a different dimension where it didn't have the different sun and the moon, like we'd be able to see that. That's usually how you know if the horologium 
constellation is going to appear. You get the solar eclipse, and then that night is when it is out. But anyway, uh, I'm just going to continue on doing what I'm doing here, like I've been talking about, trying to find more constellations and discover them. Yep. So waiting for 28 in-game Minecraft days for a constellation to appear is really not something that I want to do. We're going to go ahead and try and expedite this process and make this go a little bit faster. And Blood Magic has a item in it that allows you to skip the day and bring it to nighttime. And then you can sleep in a bed to skip the night and make it daytime again. You could just keep doing this over and over to speed up the day-night cycles. Uh, so the Imperfect Ritual Stone is an item in Blood Magic that you place it on top of a piece of lapis, I believe, and you right-click it, and then it makes it nighttime. Mm -hmm. So in order for us to do that, we need to get ourselves a weak blood orb, uh, some stone, and some obsidian. Like, this recipe is very cheap, but getting the weak blood orb, this is the thing that's a little bit tricky that's going to require us to have a blood altar and a Lordic Rune Stone of Fire. But I don't think getting the runestone is really that big of a deal. We need a scorching crystal, which I'm pretty sure we've already made. And then we need the Lordic... Do you have to do both of these? I'm actually not sure. Lordic runestone. So that is a Lordic runestone offensive. Turns into the utility one in the crafting. And that is a thing that you craft in the arcane with Lordic stone wrapped around simple runestone. Lordic stone is made... By mana infused shard plus stone, you get two of those. So we need four of these things in total. Well, all of that seems like relatively straightforward. I mean, I'd rather not do it as opposed to doing it, but like it's not super difficult, right? Uh, we need to get this blood altar though in order to get this going. That's a tier one, 2000 LP, and then we need this item. So let's work on the blood altar first. So the blood altar we saw already that does require us to have a demonic will. This is the one thing that we don't have. We did get ourselves the exoskeletons though, and I think we have the steel. Let's go see what all the stuff that we have. So we have four steel, which we need. We needed eight gold and eight iron. And we have eight of both of those, awesome. And then we also need to get ourselves a furnace, which is compressed cobblestone. All right, so there is a compressed cobblestone. We have the iron and the gold. So this is all pretty easy stuff to do here. So there's our iron furnace and our gold furnace. All right, so we got a good portion of this recipe done. And then the exo that I put over here. Yeah, the exoskeletons, we already have those as well. So the only thing that we are currently missing to make this blood altar is just this demonic will. Now, in order to get demonic will, we have to get ourselves, I believe they're called snares. Does it say in here? It probably says in here. Uh, these rudimentary snares. And the snares require us to have mana infused dust, which is fine. Some string and some iron. That gives us four. So the mana infused dust we can do with two redstone. We might even have some. Uh, we have four of them. Perfect. And then string. We have string. And what was the other thing that we needed? Iron. Okay, so iron is something that we don't have in loose ingot form, but we can easily put that over here to do it. I kind of wish the factorizer was faster. I wish there was a way we could upgrade this. If this is the only way to convert from block form to ingot form, I feel like it should be a little bit faster. Maybe what we're going to end up doing is storing everything in ingot form, and then if we need blocks, we can put it into the factorizer to like convert it. Maybe. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, rudimentary snares, we're just going to go ahead and make 16 of those. Now, these things don't always work, and what you're supposed to do is right-click those. It, like, throws it like an egg or a snowball. You right-click that onto a mob. When it starts getting the little white swirlies, like it's got some kind of a potion effect, then you murder its face. Okay? So, when you murder its face with the little swirlies on, then you get a demonic will. Now, I think you can use the demonic will to make yourself uh, a sentient sword... Yeah, we're going to want one of these, and this um, will get the demon will the same way, except you don't need the rudimentary snares anymore. But it looks like that requires us at the Petty Tartark Gem. That recipe is simple. The Hellfire Forge, I was going to say is simple as well, but that requires condensed flame from Lordcraft, which actually is not that bad. Okay, so we only need one demonic will, and then we can start looking at getting ourselves... Um, that sentient sword. So I guess we're going to go to the hunting dimension. 
All right, so hunting dimension. So many mobs right here ready for me to kill their face. Oh, oh, okay. So I got to get away from these interdiction torches. Let's go find, let's turn off F7 for one. Uh, let's also eat one of these carrots. We have night vision. All right, that's a little bit better. And then rudimentary snare. So we probably don't want to attack a creeper. Man, those baby skeletons are really annoying. Uh, well, I guess we can do a creeper. That's fine. No swirlies. No swirlies. There's three. Oh, man. How many is it going to take? All right. Well, this creeper is being a real pain. I'm just going to kill it anyway. Does it got the swirlies? I'm just not seeing it. No, it did not drop anything. Oh my goodness, those weren't good. How about a spider? None of these guys seem to be getting their swirlies on. Hmm. Well, we only got two rudimentary snares left. Will the pig get it? It did not. Okay, well, I guess I need to go farm up more of those. We'll be right back, guys. All right, guys, so I went back to the hunting dimension i made like 32 more of these things and i threw a few more of them at a monster and i did not see the particle effect so they got me thinking maybe these just don't work in the hunting dimension i don't know if that's true or not um but i had a creeper spawn in here and i threw like three or four of them at it i did not see the particle effects that you normally see do i have particles off Ooh, i do that's got to be why i had the particles off because of my food <laughs> Anyway, so you throw these at the monster and they're supposed to get like particles around them when it actually activates. Yeah, that's my mistake that I had those off. But anyway, uh, I killed a creeper that had the particles and we did get a demonic will. Let's see if this one drops one. I don't think that one did, no. Well, anyway, so make sure your particles are on when you do this so you can see the particle effects. <laughs> uh, I guess I can put the um, iron spike back in here so when more monsters spawn they actually die and they don't just stay here for forever yeah i kind of want to install that mod i can't remember what it's called but like prevents player potion effects from happening because every time i eat one of these carrots like i get all these swirlies on my face so i had to turn <laughs> the video settings down to uh minimal to make those go away and i forgot about that because that was quite a few days ago that i did that anyway we got ourselves the demonic will that we are looking for so we should be able to now make this item so if we come over to our crafting table and we do the blood altar, yep, it all goes like it should. Cool. So blood altar is done. So in order to in order to make the weak blood orb, we now need this Lordic Rune Stone of Fire. So again, that required that scorching crystal, which we have already previously made. So that's easy. And then I guess a Lordic Rune Stone. So this is in a Rune Stone Crafter. I don't know if we have made one of those yet. So that's a Staff Crafter, Arcane, Arcane. Mm. So we have, oh, we do have a Rune Stone Crafter. Okay, so I think that must have been from a quest or something previously. All right, so we'll throw that one down here. Uh, so we need this guy here. And then the other thing was this Lordic Rune Stone, which comes from the Lordic Rune Stone Offensive. And that one we saw was crafted by the Lordic Stone around a simple rune stone. And the simple rune stone is a mana infused shard with stone around it. Mana infused is made with two of those like that. Uh, oh, I need to get some more damp crystals. Damp. All right, so we take the damp crystals, we right click it on the interface here. We'll just fill that all the way up to 16. Cool, and we'll click this button. So that does a the thing. Then we also need the stone. Uh, I think I actually have that in, I think, null. Uh, stone, stone, stone. Yeah, we got stone in here. Perfect. Okay, so we have that, this. And then that was crafted over here, I believe. So we just wrap stone around that. And there's the simple rune stone. And then the Lordic one requires us to have Lordic stone wrapped around it. And that was the mana infused shard. So we need four of these, right? And well, I guess I'm going to have to make two more of these things. So I need four more redstone. All right, I'll just go ahead and craft the rest of this. Surprise Lordcraft. Haha. <laughs> All right, so in order for us to proceed here, in order for us to make this Lordic stone, we need transform research. Yep, I tried making this and nothing was happening. 
So, yeah, if we go into the Lorecraft book, we go to the research, we can see right here, transform is in fact locked. Uh, so as it turns out, if you go into the quest book in Project Dozone 3 to the moves section, we go to the translocation matrix, which we never did, but we did make the ascension matrix. It's how we got to the nexus dimension. But if we click on this, it says right click the mark on a block you want to move, right click on the matrix to establish the link, then activate the matrix with the redstone signal to unlock the transform research. Mm hmm. Now I seem to recall reading somewhere or looking on the internet how to do the void power research. And that's what people were saying that you had to do and that was incorrect. It's for the transform research. So if we place this here and then we place this here, we do a shift right click and a right click. And then we gotta give it a redstone signal, which I don't have available right now. Let's do a stick. I don't have a stick in here, cobblestone. I can do that. I think we got sticks over here. Yes, we do. All right, let's just make ourselves a lever real quick. Awesome. So redstone signal. Okay, so I made the advancement research unlocked. So this is Lordic soil. I actually don't know what special properties this has, but the only thing I really care about is that this is available now. Um, Perhaps I was wrong to so hastily use this idea it would seem that certain objects change when moved by the wave. I will need to be careful in case I lose something valuable. Regardless, the items formed from the displacement do have a strange feel to them and may be useful in advancing my work. Yeah, I have no idea this Lordic soil uh, uses. Does that show? There's like, there's nothing you can do with that. So I don't know, it's just a special custom block or something. Anyway. Uh, the research is now unlocked. That's the important thing. So if we place this here and this here and we click the button like so, we can now make ourselves the Lordic Stone. And that's really all we want it to do. Now, this has actually got me curious. If this transformed uh, the dirt into that Lordic soil, can we just make the stone? I don't know how this works. Let's figure that out. So we place this here and we'll do the same thing. Uh, shift right click, right click this, boom, Lordic Stone. And if you break it, okay, so we don't have to craft it the way I am crafting it. We can just use the translocation matrix to do it. Aha, so it's a bit cheaper to do it that way. Well, now we know. I don't remember doing this in Project Dozone 3, the normal mode when I first played that. Maybe this stuff wasn't locked out. I, I honestly don't know. But anyway, we are now able to do this. So arcane crafting, so on the arcane Workbench, we should be able to make this guy. Uh-huh. Now, I said if we craft that, we turn into a Lordic runestone. That's the next thing that we need. Or the utility one, I mean. So we'll make this guy. And then to make this, we had to put that in the rune, uh, the runestone crafter. This one with this guy. And I guess we click the button and it instantly makes it. All right, so now we have the Lordic runestone of fire. Awesome. So that's what we needed to put into our blood altar. Now, the only thing is our blood altar is still in our inventory. We haven't done anything with this yet. So we now need to get ourselves blood from blood magic. Uh, you know, what? I didn't look at the sky tonight. It is a new moon, which doesn't really mean anything, but let's just kind of poke around here. I have been collecting all these constellations, guys. I've discovered Foranax, Lucerna, whatever, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I just want to keep looking to see if we can get the Horologium one done. And if it's available, we can attune to it as well. But no, no new constellations this night. Okay. Uh, so we want to do blood magic. And then we want, I think it's called the dagger of sacrifice. Sacrificial dagger, this guy. So to make that, we need Solium plus a black quartz sword. Well, we've seen how to make black quartz. It's smelting the smoky quartz. Easy. And then the solium. Yes, yeah, solium, not solarium. Is made by smelting solium dust, which is prudentium. And soul dust. Soul dust is soul stone smelted. And prudentium, we've seen that before. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and get working on this. We'll make the sacrificial dagger, and we'll be right back. And a short trip to the Landia dimension later, we needed some more of the Frisian ingots or whatever. Anyway, 
Yep, yeah, we are now ready to go here. So sacrificial dagger. I like how when I put that in my inventory, it went from MBT zero tags to one tag like immediately. I guess it knows my name or something. I'm not sure. But anyway, we should be able to come over here to our blood altar and just right click this dagger. It's gonna use some of our HP and fill uh yeah, fill it full of life essence. Mm-hmm. Definitely not blood. This is the mod's called blood magic, but that's that's definitely life essence, and it's like red, right? Anyway, <laughs> so we're gonna fill that up full of life essence here. I'm just gonna let my health regen a bit, keep right clicking this a little bit. We should have plenty to drop this guy in now. Okay, so that's gonna do a thing, and there it is. Awesome. So we got ourselves a weak blood orb, and now that we have that, we should be able to do this. So now we want four stone and four obsidian to make the imperfect ritual. So one, two, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, stone. I was gonna try and scroll that out. That didn't seem to work too well. So there's that and then obsidian. There we go. So we got the stone and the obsidian. Let's go ahead and craft this guy up. And there it is, the imperfect ritual stone. Now for right now, actually we need a uh, lapis, right? But right now I'm gonna keep this next to the bed so we can do all of our time changing in one location. I think you do it like that. It is now nighttime, so that doesn't really matter at the moment. Let's take a look through our telescope and see if we can see any new rituals or any new constellations, I mean. And looking through here, I see none. Okay, so since there's no new constellations, we can go ahead and sleep till day. And then I will go ahead and click the imperfect ritual, which said set it back to the next night. Unless I have this backwards, which it very well could be. There we go. So it's now nighttime. We took a little bit of damage. And I gotta remember where my telescope is. Okay, so now we can go through and look for another constellation. Cool. Well, now that we can move it from day to nighttime and progress a day to get the new constellations going, uh, finding that horologium ritual or a constellation for the ritual itself will be very, very easy to do. But anyway, guys, we are out of time for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on this episode if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.